All right, guys. So welcome to another episode of Latino Vegano Podcast. And today I have a special guest, John Thomas, a.k.a. the bodybuilding vegan. So I'm going to read a little about, there you go, John, <laughs> plays the vices. So let me tell you a little bit about John. So he's been vegan for about 17 years. So you went vegan at age 13. We need to talk about that. Um, he's a competitive bodybuilder, online fitness coach. So he owns a clothing company named Athlicity, NoCal and True Nutrition sponsor Atli, and is the author of the Instagram success ebook, right? So we'll talk about all of that. Uh, how you doing, John? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Great, great, great. Uh, well, we we actually happy to have you go. I think it is it's been a while. Been been following for a while, and uh, I see that you post a lot of cool stuff um, and focuses a lot on in bodybuilding and, and getting all those 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 gains. So before we even go go further down that that, that route, sorry about your own journey. Uh, let's talk about. So you went vegan at age 13. Like, how was that? Like, how, what makes you, you know, at age 13, make that decision? Uh, what inspired you to go vegan? Because I, th I always think that, you know, sharing your story, you don't know who can relate to it, right? There's always someone to be like, even though you share your story like 150,000 times, it's always one person be like, oh yeah, I can't relate to that person or oh, haven't heard your story. So do you mind sharing that for us? Yeah, of course. Um, so I was actually vegetarian for about three years, um, uh, before mm -hmm. I became, um, so I feel like that was the more pivotal, pivotal change for me. Um, it was kind of where in my own journey, my eyes were open and I couldn't unsee what I saw. Um, so I was, must've been around 10 years old at the time. Um, I had a lifelong friend and she decided one day that she was going to be vegetarian, um, mm -hmm. like her her mom would always bring us food for lunch um, or, or like uh, like an early snack after school. And usually like hamburgers would be a few days a week. And one day she's like, I'm not eating this. I'm vegetarian now. So you should be too. And at first I was like, well, she's my friend. So like, I respect her. Like, that's fine. But also I'm, I'm like normal. I'm going to do what my parents do. I'm going to do what everybody else does. And if the rest of the world does it, what, what's the problem? And I think, you know, I, I kind of wrote it off, but there was that little, that little voice in my head that was like, well, she does this because she doesn't want to kill a cow. Mm -hmm. and, and that kind of stuck with me. And it, it didn't change me overnight. But I, once I started thinking about it, I couldn't stop. Um, at that age, I was, I was bullied a lot for how I looked. Um, I think that's what you know, led me to the bodybuilding route later. Um, and so I didn't want to be, I didn't want to give them any more ammunition. I didn't want to be a weird vegetarian because it's kind of like in style to be vegan or, or something now, maybe at least yeah. some people think it is, but back then 20 years ago, it was, it was, nobody was doing it. A lot of people didn't even right. know what it was. And if they found out you were, they, they'd make fun of you. So right. um, I still ate fish. I still, would, I, I told myself I would eat turkey when Thanksgiving came around because that was like my favorite dish at the time. And um, I remember eating a, a piece of fish and like trying to think like how the Native Americans would think and be like grateful for each bite. And then I just was right. like, if I was really grateful, I could have just let it keep swimming and eat something else. So mm -hmm. uh, Thanksgiving rolls around. And that was the day that I could say I became vegetarian. Cause I looked on the, on the table and I was like, if I'm not going to eat a fish, if I'm not going to eat a pig, I'm not going to eat a cow. Why would I eat a turkey? Like it's all the same thing. It's all an animal. So at that time I became vegetarian and I thought, I thought that was my pinnacle. I thought that was it. I thought <laughs> you're vegetarian, you're great. Cause you're, you're not killing anything. Right. And then, lo and behold, about three years later, I remember riding to middle school my mom was driving me to class i was in eighth grade so i was like 13 and um this PETA magazine somehow didn't we ended up on a mailing list it was in the car and i don't necessarily agree with everything PETA did but they they right. changed they made me vegan because they opened my eyes again to you know okay you're vegetarian that's a start but you know every dairy cow as soon as it stops making milk they kill it and turn it into a hamburger anyways and they're not treated nicely that whole time as well so I was like, well, I'll try being vegan. I'll give it my best shot. And um, 
good lord the number of things that were not vegan that i was eating as a vegetarian was a lot and i remember two days in i had some peanut m&ms with my dad at the movie theater and i didn't realize till after the movie like, dang those weren't vegan um but I was just going to try it for a week and see if I could do it. Now it's been 17 years and it's, it's a way of life for me. Um, it's a lot easier now because back, back then they didn't have the impossible Whopper Chipotle didn't have <laughs> a Sofritas option. Like I don't even eat out that much now, but like you can go to Walmart and just walk down and see option after option after option. And like okay. you used to have to go to the expensive health food stores to find a crappy amount of stuff that's, that's nothing like what they have now. So it's gotten a lot easier. Um, yeah. But then I feel like, so being vegan, my eyes were opened once again. And then I thought that was it. Right. And um, I had my eyes open one more time. Um, I'm sure there will be more as I go, but um, the person who makes this shirt, my friend Brent from One to Save Many, he makes all these shirts and donates 100% of the proceeds to animal charities. Mm -hmm. And so he um, innocently asked me one day towards the end of the month, he said, I have some extra money put aside this month to donate to some charities. Who do you recommend? Who, who do you support? And I had nothing for him. Mm -hmm. I never donated to charity. I mean, and at that time, it hit me that like, being vegan doesn't make you better than anyone else. It doesn't mean right. you're on this great crusade for the animals or the planet. You're basically just trying to be like net, net neutral. Like you're not hurting, but you're not helping. You're just existing and coexisting. Right. And right. so uh, Brent helped open my eyes to, I can do more. I can give back. And I, I always use the excuse, like I'm not super well off or like I got bills to pay, but like, I'm not saying I donate a crazy amount of money. I buy three or four shirts a month and that's a hundred, 150 bucks. And, um, yeah. that'll be some animal sanctuaries out there. And, um, and for me too, like if you're watching this and you don't have any vegan friends, put on a vegan shirt, you'll, you'll realize just how many other vegans are around you that also don't know there's other vegans around. So, um, yeah, so my eyes were open again then, and, and maybe they'll be open again later on, but, um, Right. That was kind of my my journey to where I'm at now. And that's that's why if you're watching this, if you're not vegan or if you're if you're plant curious, I've heard people say, like, <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself. Everybody comes to this at their own time. Um, we're all on our own journey. If if my friend hadn't stepped into my life at 10 years old. I think there's a chance I might not even be vegan today because about mm. five years I got into bodybuilding and everybody in bodybuilding, you have to eat meat. You can't be a vegan and be a bodybuilder. Had I not already been entrenched into veganism, I might have blocked it out for the pursuit of this sport. And so, um, you know, I got lucky on my journey. And so I'm not here to cast judgment on anyone else. It's just once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. So, man, John, you, you mentioned so many things. Like, I don't even know where to start. Like, I want to share a few things with you. Like, well, first, let me tell you about this, though. Um, you know, I, I went to kind of piggyback on what you were saying about, like, you know, having a vegan shirt. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, one time, I'm, I'm, I live here in Houston, and one time I was at my local gym, and I, I saw this girl wearing a vegan shirt. So, you know, when I saw someone with a vegan shirt, you know, my first reaction was like, oh. So I sprinted, like, yo, are you my poor girl because she like oh my god this guy's coming at me like so i was like are you vegan she like yeah i'm like i'm vegan too and that changed everything right as soon as i say i'm vegan too then you know you, her whole body her whole reaction changed right she's like oh okay you're vegan and then we started talking and then um and shout out to Haley right there so and then from that point on you know we, you know, we became acquainted we talk and whatnot and uh of course she even though I had been vegan for a lot longer, I mean, I guess for a lot more time than her at that point, she was on her journey. She was way ahead of the game. Like, like you said, she was talking about animal rights and all the different things. She actually, um, same, she actually was part of uh, B, uh, she was part of PETA. And then she did one of those uh, PETA rally, which I know, like, again, same thing with you. I don't necessarily agree with everything that PETA does. But at the same time, I had to give it up to them because they, somewhere, somehow, they do the work. Even though you might not agree with it, 100% they do. 
but Peter also changed me too because, and I told that story quickly uh, after I finished uh, telling this story. But yeah, so um, so you know, she was she did a Peter rally at once, and I was like, oh my god! And she told me all these different things about you know like veganism that I wasn't aware of at that period of my life. So it, it it comes down to what you're saying, right? You know, you make some you know some friends and friends introduce you to different things, different angles, different things that you probably haven't even even realized or haven't even think about yet. And then that's how you continue growing, right? It's the same thing. Like we can use the analogy of working out, right? The first time you go to the gym, you don't have no idea what to do. And then, you know, then you got a coach or you learn from someone, somebody introduce you to the gym and then you can look and start doing weights and whatever, whatever. But the point is like, that's how we, we evolve uh, as, as vegan, right? You, you get to, you, you can't get complacent. You always have to continue seeking and, and, and learning more because the more that you do, uh, it allows you to be a, a bigger representation of your, of, of your movement per se. And, um, and, and just quickly to, to kind of share with you, the, my, my story was very kind of similar, right? Um, I was introduced to, to plant-based, plant-based world because my friend, even though he was vegan back then, I've been vegan for since 2002. So it's been, yeah, it's been, it's been around what, 20 plus years. So even though I, um, I was introduced to vegan by a friend of mine as well, um, did he he's he was a uh, he was a vegan for about a year the year i met him oh no the year we started uh, talking about it he was like yeah you gotta he introduced me to vegan uh male friend uh rafael his name is and um and then and then from there i was even though he he introduced me to vegan he actually told me you have to make your own research i can't i can't tell you uh what to do what to eat or what not to do because I think it's better if you do your own research and then you find from your own self and find your own, find your why you want to become vegan or plant-based. Back then, like you say, it was not called vegan. It was called like strict vegetarian or something along those lines. Vegetarian was predominant the, 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 the diet or the, the, the lifestyle choice back then. And we're talking about 20 plus years ago. So, um, so it was a different mindset back then when it comes to that. And uh, he introduced me to it. And then from that introduction, um, I started researching and I think the one of, of course I, I first thing I cut was like meat, but, uh, I think I ate fish for a little bit as well too. Kind of was fish was like part of my diet because I really had no nutrition background whatsoever. Like if you don't have no nutrition background, not because you're going vegan now right away, you're going to become an expert in nutrition. Like, no, nah, like you, you got to have at least some of the ba basic principles, right? Or macronutrient, micronutrient, we can talk about all that. But the point is like, if you don't have no idea about nutrition, like if you have a poor diet, not because you're going, going vegan or you're automatically going to become a super expert in dieting, right? Because you can go vegan, eat Oreos or whatever, cookies and cake all day long, right? And then you're like, yeah, I'm eating vegan food, right? But the point is like he I was introduced to him to this lifestyle through him. And then um I started doing my research a couple, maybe like a couple years later. And then I I found out some of the PETA video which talk about slaughtering animals and stuff like that. And that was actually triggers the emotion for me to make my change and be like, all right, now nah. cold talking no upon intended. I went vegan next day. I was like, all right, cool, I'm done with this. I ain't eating anything that is animal based and so on and so forth. But uh, it, during my journey, I, did, I was probably still wearing like a leather belt or wearing any shoes. So I can call myself quote unquote vegan, but I always used to say vegan because that was the only thing that I knew. And then I learned more about that. Like, nah, it's not just, you know, it's not just the food, it's just the clothing, it's all the different things, entertainment. I'm like, oh, so I started learning all the different things. So, yeah, I wanted to share a little bit about our experience because I think the one thing that most vegans have is that we have very similar stories, right? To some way, somehow, we have some way, somehow, our stories intertwined, if you don't think about it, because, you know, even if you've been vegan for a while, even if you are new or vegan too, there's always something like, oh, yeah, 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 something, somebody, there's always something that like, you can relate. You, you, I just know the same too? I yes. Guess. I mean, we, nobody forced us to do this. Right. We, we all made this choice. Um, and for, for whatever reason, we, we are not, I'm not going to say better, but we're different than other people. We are, exactly. we are kind of with what we're doing. And, and I think it's, it's not so much if you're a perfect vegan, it's more of the intent. You know, if somebody is listening and they, they became vegan last week and then they bought a leather belt this week and they didn't even think about it, like, yeah. okay, like you don't need to beat yourself up for that. You don't need to throw it away either. Like the damage is already done. 
Um, you know, I had bought used cars that had leather seats. Like I, I knew where it came from, but like, I wasn't the first consumer. Um, and it's just, as you go longer, you realize more, uh, the things that have animal products in them that you wouldn't even know about, um, unless you did like in-depth research, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. So, um, I think intentions matter and for PETA, I'll say this, like, I think my heart connects with everyone's heart at PETA. Um, and then my brain is trying to think like, okay, if this is the game to influence as many people as possible, what's the best strategy? And uh, everybody responds differently. I mean, for me, seeing some of the videos and um, like stuff from like slaughterhouses like that, that was strong enough to leave an impact on me. Some people that doesn't work, um, other people that shuts them off. And so um i think you know it's it's our, our hearts are all in the same place we're just trying to figure out how to put it out there so i'm i'm grateful for them but i also know that they attract a lot of heat from from, from yeah. some of the things so yeah they do especially when they talk about like putting like naked women and stuff like that <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean they get a lot of heat for that kind of stuff like they don't think that it's productive in some way somehow uh we're not here to judge them for that you know so but it's good to have a conversation about it too um uh, but again just like you mentioned me seeing those videos is what created an impact maybe for me that that approach works because i'm the type of guy like if you show me like like let's say i'm not the type of guy that needs to have things sugar-coated right like if we can go straight to the point like tell me exactly what the thing is and we'll we'll go for it like and then that for me is my approach so that works for me right but with the, some people might need things to be kind of like tell it in a different way, you know, kind of go around in different areas and different angles and use different words. So that that showing them a, a slaughterhouse would be like, oh, no, that's too, too graphical. So so that's like you say, everybody has different approach to different things. So let, let's talk about your, your bodybuilding journey, because you mentioned that um, you got into bodybuilding just because you've been, they were bullying you a lot. And this is, this is a very interesting thing, because I think a lot of people don't realize sometimes how from a male perspective we we deal with this right we deal with 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 some some of the bullying and 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 and, and all the different angles because i went to the same thing too right you 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 had to build that confidence somewhere somehow and and people don't realize how the gym help you from that perspective and then they only see you know the the muscular guy and they think right away oh well you know he he's just showing off his muscle he just he just too cocky or whatnot but they don't realize all that that journey that you had to be able to get to that point one and two and how that changed your life to win so hard so you can build the, one of the character the character that you are right now right so can you share a little bit of that pretty much from like kindergarten through the end of middle school i was yeah. i was born heavily um i can just i can remember being like punched i can remember being like thrown on desks i can remember being name called like it just, it, it felt like it never ended. And I know it was like even hard on my parents because I just come home and cry like mm. many over. Um, and so I think a part of me kind of just compartmentalized that. Um, and as I was growing and got into high school, my sport of choice was soccer. And in high mm. school, I wrestled. And at the end of re the wrestling season, I was okay. I, for a freshman, I was... I was decent. Like I could hold my own with uh, yeah. one of the juniors and I was already better than one of the sophomores. So like I was all right at wrestling. Um, but then after the, the season ended, we had to go lift weights. And after the first session, I was like, Oh no, this is, this is my home now. This is what I like. And I was so weak. I couldn't, I think I remember my dad drove me to the gym when I got my membership at like, 15 because I didn't have a car or anything I, I couldn't drive I was 15 and like yeah. I remember he had to pull 125 pounds off my chest like I tried to rep that for once I, I couldn't even do that so yeah. I was but I was hooked and um I kind of just like found my identity in the gym for a while um, that was all I cared about and it wasn't you know it wasn't to be like necessarily bigger better than anyone else it was just um it was cool getting stronger at first I was addicted to like the strength, like to go in and know I was stronger than I had ever been before. Um, and then to, to be able to build my body, that was, that was like, it, it inspired me. Like any progress I made, made me want to progress even more. 
And I kind of had this thought in the back of my head, if, if I get so big that I'm this much bigger than them, then, then they won't want to make fun of me. They won't want to put me down. And so instead of learning to just like love myself and say, hey, like you were just a kid, you didn't really do anything wrong. That's on them for judging you. I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to, I'm going to reinvent myself. I'm going to become big. And, and so like, I never like set out with the intention of competing, but after doing it for a number of years, I felt like I'm pretty much like doing everything else. Why not compete? And somewhere, I don't know when along this journey, I became confident in myself. And, um, you know, if, if you're on your journey, if, if somebody else is listening on theirs, the muscles don't give you confidence. Like you could transport yourself into my body, but that won't do it for you. Because right now, if I, after this call, I'm driving to the gym. If I get in a wreck on the interstate, I'm paralyzed from the waist down and I lose all my muscle. That confidence will never leave me until the day I die. I have, I have built that confidence rep by rep and the learning to believe in myself and those people can't ever hurt me anymore because I choose who hurts me and it, it doesn't have to do with the muscles. That was just my tool to build that confidence for me. Um, and, and really anything that you learn from the gym, you can apply anywhere else in your life, like hard work, dedication, consistency. And honestly, I feel like my life at times is kind of on easy mode because you'll never be able to make my day harder than like the two hours that I train legs. Like that is, I get anxious for that. I get scared for that. I get nervous. That's the hardest part of my week. So anything else whether it's meetings, podcasts, talking in front of people, things that used to scare me, those aren't too bad. Like legs is hard. Everything else is, is just not so bad. So I don't know. I kind of got long winded there, but for me, I think, you know, I found the gym before finding drugs or alcohol or, or anything else that could have consumed me in a, in a negative fashion. Cause I think I have a pretty addictive personality and I feel like that, that really saved me. That's it. That's awesome. That's, that's great. And then that's a really good um, piece of advice there. And then you're right. I mean, uh, the gym is, it's just a tool. It's not, it's not really going to define who you are or it's going to, because you can go to the gym everybody can go to the gym and it's just still doesn't have confidence right so but you have to use all the tools available in the toolbox and then uh, to and then gym is one and i mean of course dieting and all the other different things mind game mindset knowledge all the different things that you that you work your finance all the different aspects of your life you start building that that character from a male standpoint right but at the same time i mean it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be you just rely on that or, or, or say okay when i get big or when i get do this then i'm gonna no no you start the process enjoy that process from that point on because getting big might take you uh, a long time it's good that you have goals but it might take you a while so it's not like you're gonna go to the gym touch your weight and you, it's just gonna happen i mean we wish you would be that way right <laughs> you, you, we, we all wish you would be that way so let me ask you something. What are some of the biggest personal challenges that you have faced as a vegan bodybuilder and how do you overcome them? I think the, the bigger one right now mm -hmm. is, is finding good coaching um, mm -hmm. because there are very few high level vegan prep coaches. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I get, I get a large percentage of my competitor clients from competitors that have worked with non-vegan coaches that had no clue how to advise them nutritionally. Um, I like to think of myself as a little bit of a hybrid. Like I encourage people to be vegan and I coach vegans, but I also have competitors that are not vegan. So I understand their diets. I understand what they need to eat um, and how to do it because there's, there's so much information available online. Um, if, if they tell me they're going to come and work with me and they're, they're absolutely not going to be vegan, I'll still work with them because I work with bodybuilders too. Um, but on the other side, there's not very many uh, non-vegan bodybuilding coaches that also know the vegan side. So for me on my journey, you know, I found a very good prep coach, but he's not vegan. So I have to advise him on what I eat and what I need to eat. Uh, like he can kind of give me macro ranges, 
but I've, I've fixed enough people's diets to know that like, it's not just for competitors. It's not just if it fits your macros, like the food matters. Um, yeah, vegans characteristically can get too much fiber that matters. Like there's just so many intricacies that's that I've kind of figured out along the way. Um, and so that's why, that's why I'm a coach. That's, that's one of the reasons is because I've figured out this path and it's, it's, it's been hard because I, I've had to do a lot of like self-experimentation and, um, you know, a lot of trying to try and piece together things from many different resources. So, um, I think finding like at a competitive level, finding a good vegan prep coach is, is very hard. That's probably been my biggest journey into this. Like you got to be able to face rejection. I, I reached out to a few high name coaches and they just straight up said, I, I don't know enough about being like respect to them but, but they said i don't know enough about being vegan so i can't work with you and and even my coach told me when we started he said i i don't think you can turn pro as a vegan i just i don't think you can i'll work with you i'll give you all the tools i got but i'm not gonna like promise you anything after a year together i got the text from him that said okay i believe it i've seen enough in a year we can do this we still got a ways to go but we can do this so um i'd like to turn pro i'd like to be the first uh plant-based pro in the ifbb for men's open bodybuilding there's there's never been one there's like me my delgado and tori washington they're both in men's physique but there's never been somebody in in men's open bodybuilding that's done the, the largest class so um that's that's kind of my short term next year or so goal and I know, I'm sure you're gonna get that, John. So we we all we are we are training room for you. You know, uh, it's interesting that you say that because I, I dealt with this a, a lot. Um, I'm a competitor myself as well for the NFF. Uh, I turned pro in 2019, and um, and you no, know, but even before I tell you that, um, I remember the first time I went to like a gym, and uh, I I was you know sometimes when you go to a gym. This gym has those, those the, the employees that work at the gym. They have sometimes they have trainers and whatnot. So they give me like a complimentary training just to see if I will sign up with the with the with this particular gym um, chain. And then um, and they anyway. So I I started talking to the guy. I was like, "What's your goal?" So I'm like, "Man, I want to look this way." And I showed him like a magazine where they had this guy rip. I'm like, "I want to look like this guy." And what a name! And like, "Oh yeah, I can get you there." We'll get you a, a split routine, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. So I'm like, hey, but this is a cabbie. I'm vegan. I'm like, oh, no, there's no way you're going to do that. I'm like, dude, how are you going to tell me that this is not possible? If you would really be a good trainer, a good coach, you say, really, I don't know how to do it, but I'll find out how if you want to still coach me. But I will say, but don't say it's not possible because it's, it has to be possible. So there's people out there doing it. And he was like, oh, no. And I was not even thinking about competing. I was just talking about just being fit, basically, right? So it was interesting that uh, I, I dealt with this. And now I agree with you. A lot of, even my personal coach now, even my coach now, uh, he's now vegan. And uh, he, was, he was a little bit skeptical when I mentioned, like, oh, yeah, I'm 100% plant-based. He, he wanted me to change my diet. But you know that's not going to happen. So either, either you figured it out or I find somebody else because, you know, we can't. I'm not going to just change, you know, my diet just because you don't know how to do, how to coach a vegan. Um, so you either have to expand your, your, um, your curriculum so you can, you can understand how the plan base will uh, happen or you basically has to uh, just, you know, no, don't work. Like you said, don't work with, with vegans, but I mean, we're, we're doing some good progress. So, so, and then he, he's now, I don't hear him saying now like, oh, it's not possible anymore because he's seeing that we're getting we're getting some gains. So when it comes to that, I think we kind of helping also helping the, the this these people, these different people that have some small little knowledge of what plant based nutrition and fitness is to kind of get some more insight into our world. So which is also part of our activism in a way or somehow, right? Yeah, a hundred percent for me, like the bodybuilding is the activism yeah. uh, you know even, I, I train at uh, mi40 gym here in tampa it's one of uh -huh. the gyms in the nation and uh i've made friends with a few people there like to be honest i'm i'm weighing like 245 pounds mm -hmm. i'm not usually the biggest guy in the room not even mm -hmm. close there's there's like previous mr olympia is walking around in there but i've had a few people and one one guy even his uh his girlfriend's vegan and he comes up to me and he's like, damn, 
I, you know, when she did it and, and she's been vegan, I didn't think that I could do it too. Mm. But now looking at you, I think that, you know, I, I could probably eat some more vegan meals if I want to. Like, if, it, if it's working for you, it could work for me. And I've never seen anyone else your size that's a vegan. So I didn't think it was possible. And so that, that for me, like, even if I don't get anyone to convert directly to veganism, I think changing right. public perception, my coach a year ago would have said it's impossible. Now he said he believes in it. Uh, same with your coach. Like, we're, we're changing minds, even if we're not getting people all the way over. And I think that's, that's a big part of a societal push. If, if we can get rid of all the, the negative myths, yeah. veganism, that will be a huge step for us in and of itself. Um, kind of furthering into that, I've been saying this for a while, like a part of me is getting tired of bodybuilding. I've mm. been basically bodybuilding since I was 15 and I'm 30 now. Um, it's just, a, you know, as a competitor, it's all consuming. A yeah. lot of your day is dedicated to it, not just the time in the gym, and not just the cardio and not just the posing, but also, you know, the shaving, the eating, the meal prepping, checking in with your coach. It, it, it basically is a full-time job that you pay money to do. Um, and so I'm still doing it because of what that guy in the gym told me. I don't know any other vegans my size. I don't know anybody else that's doing this on like the, the NPC stage, like the, the IFBB stage at the, the caliber that I'm doing it at right now. Right. And so this is my activism. If I woke up tomorrow and the world was vegan, I'd probably give this up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's not going to happen. And so that, that's what pushes me forward. Like, I, I feel like I have an edge over other competitors because it's one thing to compete for yourself. It's one thing to compete for money. It's one thing to compete to, to prove your self-worth. But I feel like I have a better reason than all of that. I want to save some lives. Like right. there, there's nothing that could be bigger to me for that. So yeah, it'll help my coaching business. It'll it'll help my sponsors. It'll it'll probably get me some clients. But like all of that doesn't matter nearly as much as as showing that this can be done and like there's no excuses. We can all be vegan. And and I think, you know. I'd be the same person if I was never a bodybuilder. I mm -hmm. still have this heart, but I wouldn't have this platform. And 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 that that's what I've realized that bodybuilding in and of itself is a little bit silly. Like we just go to the gym and put the weights right back where we found them and walk on a treadmill. <laughs> like we don't accomplish anything. Right. Um, so if I didn't have this huge driving force behind me, like because of being vegan. I don't, I don't think that I would be putting as much into it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely. I, I, I totally agree. So, John, what some of the misconceptions about veganism or the vegan fitness world would you like to dispel? I think the biggest one that like people listening to this could take away, like if you're a newly vegan or you're, mm -hmm. you're vegan myths, like what counts as vegan protein? A lot of people would be like, oh, beans lentils nuts and the answer to that is like no 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 like mm -hmm. you can eat beans you can eat lentils you can eat nuts that's fine but like eat beans because they're a complex carb and they have potassium um eat nuts because they're a healthy source of fat but like if you try to base your diet around that for protein you're going to be getting extreme amounts of fiber and this is from like a competitor standpoint so like right, right. They want to eventually compete that are vegan. That, that's something that I educate them on. If you're just a regular person eating a regular amount of food, you could probably eat whatever, whatever's comfortable and not worry about it. I didn't know anything about nutrition when I was vegan at 13 and I survived. Um, so, but like common misconception. I think the other one, at least on my end, is that I think, I think it gets pushed that like we don't need as much protein as we think we do. Right, um, right, right. But for myself and all my competitors, I put their protein a bit higher. Um, I've just noticed it works better. It works better for hunger. It seems to work better for building muscles. So, like, I don't have any of my competitors, even the women, like, under a gram per pound of body weight, and sometimes even more. I have a competitor actually hitting the stage this weekend, and she's currently 115 pounds. And up until this last week, she was eating almost 200 grams of protein a day. Mm -hmm. um, 
all vegan and that's what was like working for her she was still getting leaner and um it was helping keep her hunger somewhat manageable she would always say it was like a 10 or a 15 out of 10 but like it was it was more manageable than if we had kept the protein a lot lower so i guess all this is like competing is, is its own different realm in nutrition that a lot of people have no idea about yeah you know you inspire a lot of people john but who are some of your inspirations like either it could be a vegan or it could be a non-vegan Oof. i draw i draw on a lot of people for this um I guess I want to give a few shout outs. Uh, the yeah. first, first will be my mom. Um, okay. She, in her own journey, had kind of lived her life a certain way up until around maybe 10 years ago. Um, she didn't like certain movies because they were too violent or too, too vulgar. Um, she didn't go on trips by herself because it would, it would maybe upset my dad or, or maybe she just didn't feel fully comfortable to like, go across the United States on her own. And I don't know if she just woke up one morning, but she flipped the switch and she decided, I don't know how much longer I'm left here. I want to change. And one of her favorite movies now is Deadpool. Like <laughs> a person cool. would have walked out of that movie if she went to the theater, but to watch it anytime I put it on. Like, and, and I think that was like, for me, like seeing my mom, someone I love unconditionally, make this change to enjoy life more uh like it, it stuck with me it's like you can be how you are but you can also become what you want to be um you can learn to enjoy things so so my mom for there for sure i'll throw brent back out there with one to save many like him opening my eyes to donating and and doing more with my time in this world like that's a that's a big inspiration for me um and then other you know, other vegan competitors, um, and even coaches like, like Brooke, she's an inspiration for me. And then also my friend across the pond, Nikki in the UK, she's a big woman bodybuilder that's vegan. Like, I know this is hard for men, but for women to be bodybuilders, mm -hmm. they have so many more societal standards that they have to break and social norms that they have to deal with. So like, I, the inspiration from her like I almost like kind of told myself today because we were messaging each other back and forth I'm like you know as long as she's doing this I'm gonna keep doing it like yeah. if, she, if she put up with it I can put up with it so um she's an inspiration to me too nice that's great shout out to all of them especially Brooke we have Brooke in one of our episode uh she she's amazing uh what advice would you give someone who wants to start bodybuilding or any fitness training as a vegan of course right like what what would be some of the first things you will tell them tell him or her i i like what your friend told you like do your own research but in this mm -hmm. it, it can be a little bit hard to to pull through all the noise when you google like what vegan foods to eat as a bodybuilding vegan like you're probably going to come a lot of across a lot of sites trying to sell you something um right. true intuitive i'm going to say find a good coach like find someone that's reputable that's done this before um my biggest regret about hiring a coach is that i didn't do it five years sooner i guarantee mm -hmm. i could be broke by now if i had found my coach a few years ago mm -hmm. um it 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 allowed me to believe in myself more to push myself harder and to be more accountable i spent the majority of my career doing all this on my own but like I would have eventually saved money anyways, because I wouldn't have to, you know, buy as much food or as much supplements. I would have already been to where I wanted to be. I took the longer route trying to do it all myself, right. but in, in anything. And like, uh, when I want to learn more about social media, I hired a coach for that. When I wanted to get better at my finances, I hired a, a, a financial advisor. Um, when I want to get better in my relationships, either with myself or with others, I hire a therapist. So like find an expert if you want to get good at, at anything whatever whatever your thing is so yeah you know what that's that's an interesting thing i mean and i 100 agree i feel like we live or uh, uh, sometimes in a way that we want to figure it out everything right but that, and that's completely fine but the thing is like sometimes you need to understand that why sometimes reinvent the wheel if there's somebody that is successful and we're we're speaking about successful in a specific um niche and specific uh, trade or whatever it is 
get some ideas, get some advice, find a mentor, uh, get a coach, um, learn from this person because they usually, they, I mean, they're doing something that is working for them and then you don't want the same result. So get some quality, quality people next to you, build your team, um, get some valuable information, not just some random information, get it from the actual source. That's how we, that's how I would like to say it. And then, and then go for it for, because I think, I think that will make a big difference in your own life. Same way with me. I mean, I need, I can't just say, well, I'm going to go to the gym and, and then just work out because I, I, I mean, I watched two, three videos on YouTube and I mean, I already know what to do, right? You know, yeah, you might, that might help. And that might help to, to get you started. But if you really want to get somewhere, I mean, whatever is that with your journey, find help, find help. I don't know much about a specific business venture, but there's, a, there's someone that out there that has done it. Guess what? I'm just going to see if I can reach out to that person and then, and then get some insight. So, so that will help give you confidence. That will definitely give you uh, somebody that already has experience. Like I've been vegan for 20 plus years. You have been vegan for the same thing, almost two decades, right? So I can, we can share similar story when it comes to like, um, ins and outs of, of being vegan and, and some of the things that I've been mocked. I got, I lost friends. People mock me the same, same, same way. Like I can tell you the same things that you tell me, but if I can give you advice of how can you make a better or easier transition, why would you not want to listen to me when I already done this for, you know, I already have a path. Like I already been through this struggle so I can make it easier for you. Same thing. Back then there was not as many options when it comes to food. Now, now, now plant-based people spoil, man. They got everything. Like they got all, you have like 15,000 version of, of plant-based meals. I mean, back in my time, it was like soy milk and rice. Milk. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? So, I mean, and then not only that, but then you got candies and then you got, which not necessarily advocated for that kind of food, but you got candy cake, you got all kind of uh, different type of bread. And I mean, you name it, like, tell me one piece of item in your conventional diet, you cannot find a vegan alternative. I mean, it's every salami, you name it, all the different type of vegan meats. I mean, just there's so many options out there that are making it so easy for you. So the point, come back to the point is that finding help is always valuable because somebody already gone through what your struggles and whatever you're facing, and then make, they'll make it easy for you. Or like, at least it will give you enough information so you can feel confident and then embrace in whatever it is that you want to do in life. What have been some of the some unexpected benefits, physical or otherwise, of following a vegan diet and lifestyle? Like, have you seen some? I mean, I don't know. So we go back what, when you were thirteen or fifteen, and then some of the changes that you've seen in your life, physically or mentally, whatever those changes has been since you went vegan from non from the time you were non-vegan. I don't know. Um, I, when I became vegan at 13, it was purely ethical and I don't even really remember what I, what I first started eating. I really yeah. don't. Um, I just knew that it didn't have animals in it. Um, and at the time I didn't care. I wasn't a bodybuilder. I was just eating cause I was hungry. Like that was it. Um, but what I can say is, is being a coach, working with a number of clients, yeah. uh, even my, my girlfriend's journey to plant-based, like, I remember for her, she would eat plant-based when she was like with me, like when we would cook and meal prep here. Uh, but like if she went out and like, it was like, I don't know, like a Texas roadhouse or whatever, like, because that's where her friends went, right. she wouldn't always, like when we first were starting out. And then some days I would notice she would like be meal prepping and like packing the food to go. And I'm like, oh, so are you, are you like eating just vegan today? Like what's going on? She's like, well, I want to feel good today. And I was like, what does that mean? She's like, well, I've noticed the days that I stay here and eat vegan food, I feel better. Mm. And, wow. So, I mean, maybe this is just why I always feel pretty good, but like, <laughs> you know, for, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what it feels like to go eat a regular cheese pizza. Like, I don't know how you feel after that. Um, so I'll say like on the health side, my blood work comes back better than most of my non-vegan counterparts. I get it checked as a part of a bodybuilding health protocol. Um, and then kind of more than just like internal and for health, but like for 
mindset and, and life, this right here, if, if we weren't vegan, I wouldn't be talking to you. Like, not that I wouldn't have a conversation with somebody that wasn't a vegan, but I think that's why we connected. And the number of amazing people that I've connected with uh, through being vegan is life-changing. I mean, uh, starting, starting with my very, that, that friend that convinced me to, to give vegetarian a try. What's funny is three years later, I became vegan and I convinced her to become vegan because she was still vegetarian. Like it just worked out. Um, and you know, I mean, I'm not going to try and say vegans are better, but I think vegans in general kind of maybe wear their heart on their sleeves or a bit, a bit more emotional. Maybe, maybe they've been privileged and haven't had to like go through some really tough things in life that make them harden and shut out some of those emotions. And yeah. so being surrounded by people like that, I feel like my community of people that I'm close to is the best. So that's great. So John, where do you see uh, this part of, of bodybuilding and vegan bodybuilding going uh, in the next, what, five to 10 years? Like, how do you foresee that moving forward? It's brand new. It's yeah. brand new. There's still like no big name vegan competitors out there. Um, yeah, like you, cool. But I, I think now is the time. Like, I, I think there's a chance I might be the first, like I said, to be um, an IFBB pro in men's open. Um, but if not me, somebody else is going to do it soon. I, I think, I think in the next five or 10 years, that's when we'll start to get established. And then I think all it's going to take, and this is my own personal goal, is to work with some other pros that are having health issues, convert them to a plant-based diet, even if they're not vegan for ethical reasons, if they're plant-based just to live longer and perform and um, compete longer, I think they would do it. So we got we to convince somebody to give it a shot. And if we can prove that being vegan is healthier and lets competitors compete longer, bodybuilders will do anything to win, literally mm -hmm. anything. So all we got to do is show them. And, and, and I believe in my heart that I'm, I'm not wrong here. Um, I just, I don't have verifiable proof yet because nobody's done it. So I think if I can do it myself and then work with some pros, um, I, th I, th I think we can, we can change the sport the inside out. And then if all the bodybuilders are giant Jack vegans, all the kids watching it, all the, like the public perception will just change. We'll start to change. You want to be, you want to be big and, and live for a long time. I'll be vegan, you know, like, so that's what no, I'm that, that's great. And I think we'll, we'll accomplish that. We'll. Well, uh, we have to continue doing the work. I know you're doing the work as well. So we appreciate you for doing that. John, what will be some of your last, you know, some inspirational words? What will be the, you know, what, what some words that you will like, want to leave out there before we, we end this, this conversation for today? Uh, and then also, I would like to know from your perspective, what do you think is the most important quality for success? So I'll give you those two to end the, end the call. Cool. Um, first. I'm going to go ahead and go with what my dad gave me and you won't be able to see it probably, but it says, uh, this too shall pass. Um, shall he used pass. to tell me as a kid growing up and actually, uh, he passed about a month and a half ago from cancer. And so I got, I got his handwriting before that went so I could keep this with me. And it's always been true. Anything I've been going through in my entire life, whatever it is, I've, I've eventually gotten around it. Um, but it's, it's also, a double meaning for me. Um, like when I'm on stage, I'm only going to be up there for a couple minutes. This too shall pass. So enjoy it. Um, mm. I'm around friends or family. This too shall pass. These people may not be here the next time you're here. Enjoy them. Um, don't try to try to really be in that moment. Um, so that that's the quote. Um, and then for success, just work hard and don't give up. It sounds, it sounds silly, but like, I think so many people get defeated. Um, mm. I didn't get about bodybuilding when I started. I just asked the biggest dude in the gym, like, what do I do? And I showed back up morning and night, six days a week. I rode my bike to the gym. I didn't have a, I didn't have a car or I wasn't old enough to get a driver's license. Like whatever it is, if you put everything into it and when you're able to get a coach or get some guidance, like you can succeed. Like, I think people think, oh, like that doctor is, is so smart, like, or that, like, whatever, that lawyer, like, I could never do that. Like, no, like, if, if that many people can do it, like, you could probably do it too if you, if you applied yourself. 
Uh, not that it would be easy, but like, I don't think there's many things that are out of reach for people unless we lock in here and say it's out of reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be mentally ready for those changes in life. Uh, if you feel like you cannot do it, guess what? You're not going to do it because you already blocked your brain, your yourself, your mind that it's not possible. But if you actually um, change that negative paradigm and then you start thinking that is possible, then you start thinking about ways to accomplish that. Instead of thinking about, so my message will be instead of thinking about, oh, I cannot do that, is how I can do that. So instead of saying, I cannot go vegan, is how can I go vegan? Change those words and you're going to see how you're going to improve. Now you start finding more information. You find people like John and then they'll start inspiring you and be like, oh, okay, it is possible. Kind of like the guy who told me, well, you can accomplish your get muscle. Uh, as a vegan, I was like, no, nah, that's not the way you say those things. So I went to a different person and started researching and I found a vegan community. They were like, no, nah, there's a bunch of vegan athletes out there in the world. And then we're not, we are not close to each other because, you know, you're in Florida, I'm in Texas and Brooks is in Atlanta and then the other one is in Portland and the other one's in the UK, whatever. We are spread all over the world, all over the globe, but we all have that commonality, right? We all, we are in the same boat, literally. <laughs> So, so we appreciate that and we love that. So let's start changing our mindset and then you're going to see how things are going to change for you. And then the more positive thinking that you have, the better. And that clarity also comes from the way you eat and you, where you present yourself. So if you eat clean, you eat good, you work out, you do all those different things. That's going to help you also in your mindset. So I know you have a lot of projects going on. Uh, this is a time. Talk to us about your ebook. Talk to us about your coaching. Where can people find you, John? If they want to reach out to you and they want to work with you and all that good stuff, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as you can probably gather, I, I am an online fitness coach. I, mm -hmm. I specialize in vegans, bodybuilders. Um, some are one and some are the other and some are both. Um, the easiest way to probably find me is Instagram. I'm at mm -hmm. the body vegan. If you don't have Instagram, I also have my website, which is just thebodybuildingvegan.com. Um, the, the link tree on my Instagram, it'll have links to my coaching application. Um, I have put out an Instagram success book. So if you're trying to grow your Instagram, I've put basically all the tips and tricks that I've learned over the last three years or so that I've really worked to grow mine in there because I had a number of people asking me one by one and I just started saving the replies and I ended up having like a 20 page long Google sheet. And I was like, I might as well just go ahead and put this out there so that everybody can have it all in one spot. Um, yeah, other than that, just thank you, Roger, for having me on. Um, it's been a pleasure getting to know you a little bit more. And we are all in this boat together. So, Right on, brother. Yeah, well, we appreciate you uh, for, for taking the time uh, from your busy schedule to, to talk to us, share a little bit about your journey, but also give us some tips uh, about working on bodybuilding and now I'm interested you know, on, on learning more about your Instagram success book. So um, I'm definitely going to head and, and cop that and get that and then sh share, share the link with all the, the listeners and followers. So thank you, John. We appreciate you for, for taking the time and then I'll, we'll end this and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Yeah. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. Gracias por escuchar Latino y Vegano. Un show donde se habla todo lo relacionado sobre el veganismo entre la comunidad latina. No olviden suscribirse a este podcast, seguirnos en Instagram, Facebook, YouTube y a visitarnos en latinoyvegano.com.